So let's talk about your uh, bass drum techniques. I mean, yes. I, I normally play very simple-minded music, but of course, when I look at you, I, I would uh, like to be challenged. So okay. may, maybe show me something. Okay. Well, um, there are several different techniques. I focus on three main techniques. The first one is heel down playing. The second one is heel up playing in two ways. And the third one is ankle strokes. There's also swiveling technique, rocking foot technique, and, and the constant release technique, and the heel toe technique, and others. But those uh, work only on certain pedals, either, or better on certain pedals than on others. They don't always work on all instruments, uh, meaning like a crasher or a foot snare or whatever other instruments. So I use three techniques that work on any kind of pedal in any situation on any drum or instrument that's uh, played by pedal. Let's uh, focus on the first one, which is heel down strokes. I already showed you some strength building exercises yeah. for the TBLS anterior. Check it out on the website. Very important to develop the shin muscle in order to play heel down strokes, but also heel up strokes and ankle strokes. Um, and what I do, of course, heel down stroke is, is very simple. You plant your heels on the heel plate of the pedal, which means that your toes are pretty much exactly where the footboard ends, you know, if you have an average, average size foot. And you put a little bit of weight on the, on the heels. Not pressure, pressing down, just a little bit of weight so you don't slide forward when you're playing. And then all you do is you tap down in a very relaxed manner. That's a heel down stroke. Uh, let's try and play in you know, our slow doubles. This way, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And try to get used to playing little sticking patterns with your feet, not just always singles and alternating singles. Like double strokes, paradiddles, paradiddle diddles, you know, whatever patterns you can think of. Try to do those with your feet, practicing them heel down. Exactly, very good. Or let's try a paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left. Very good. Very good. Or let's try a, maybe um, a, a five-stroke roll. Alternating. Alternating, yes. Very good. All heel down. And you can probably feel, you know, if you're sliding, you just put a little bit of pressure on your heel and, and you stop sliding. Same on the pedals. So that's heel, heel down technique. Very, very simple. The next te technique I use is heel up playing. And for that, there's two versions. The first one is rolling your foot up onto the ball of your foot and then basically jogging in place. You get a high-pitched sound. Exactly. And your whole leg is moving. Very good. Very simple. The second version of this is a flat-footed stomp. You're landing with the heel and the ball of your foot at the same time. In this technique, the beater comes off the drum and you get more low end. And this is even a lower sound uh, here on this floor. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Now, try this exercise. Let's play one bar of flat footed stomping and one bar on the ball of a, a foot, like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can hear it's a low sound. high sound. Let's try half a bar, like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And let's try one bar, one quarter note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. So that's heel up playing in two uh, ways. It does affect the sound on the drum very much. Um, 
There's other lessons here on the website where you can see the difference when I'm playing crescendos with the feet and I'm moving from uh, flat-footed stomping to heel up on the ball of the foot. It drastically changes the sound on a bass drum. Now the third technique that I use is called ankle strokes. And for that, I want you to scoot back on your throne a little bit. So you, you sit and, and put one hand under your thigh like so. Exactly. So that your foot basically hangs in the air and it's completely relaxed, okay? And then just lift your foot up and tap. Exactly, but it's only the ankle. So lift your foot up and tap. The knee is not moving and there's absolutely no tension in your leg. It's super relaxed, okay? And now maybe try it with two feet. You know, put your hands under both feet so they're kind of suspended a little bit and hanging in the air, exactly. You have to scoot back on your throne maybe a little bit, exactly, like that. And now both feet are hanging in the air. And don't un put no um, tension on any of the muscles, super relaxed, and just lift your... Uh oh <laughs> you're moving. Lift your... Exactly. And that way, let's play alternating singles, two. Three, four, one, two. Try to lift your feet up maybe a little higher. It's all just ankle, no knee, no leg, nothing is moving. It's all ankle. And of course, you know, this is all great. You can, you can try, pr try and, and tap out like hertas, maybe. This way, uh, five stroke rolls. You know, and this is a very, very light tap, as you can hear. And of course, we need our hands to play the drum, so this is not an ideal position. I'm only showing you this because you want your legs to be completely suspended and your thighs to be completely relaxed. And this is a good way of showing it because your legs are hanging off the edge of the throne. But when we actually play the drums and we want to play ankle strokes, one of the most important things is, is the seat position. You can't sit at the edge of the throne like this because you have too much weight falling forward. You have to actually scoot back on your throne so your butt basically hangs off the, the back side of the throne a little bit, like this, okay? And then if you sit this way, you have support on your hamstring right here. And that's what you need. So you need to, the right throne for this. Don't get one of those motorcycle thrones or those bicycle seat shaped thrones because they have a cutout exactly where you need it, need it right here. These round thrones have support there so you can scoot back on your throne and, and, and while you do this you can sit upright and your legs are basically suspended in the air. And you can do this without falling forward or backwards off the throne. Okay? And my leg's not moving, it's completely still and immobile. All the moving com movement comes only from the ankles. So this is an ankle stroke. That way you can play, you know, whatever you want up here. Your, your upper body is always completely balanced. And when you're behind the kit, you can move forward a little bit because then you have to support from the pedals and the spring. So, it, you know, you have to not sit all the way with your butt hanging off the other side of the throne. So those are the three so your, techniques. Your, your center balance is here in the belly or? It's, yes, absolutely. It's actually right on my butt, like, right on the spindle of the throne, basically. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And you keep a straight spine, sit upright. Yeah, don't, don't lean don't backwards lean back, too much. Right. That's very bad because if you lean backwards, you have to flex your abs right. not to fall backwards. So make sure that you, if you have to lean backwards, you're sitting too far Right. in front of the throne. You have to move back. No, no, actually the other way. You have to move backwards on the throne. Right. Plus, always make sure you're sitting a little too low that That's your right. hip I joint was just about to say, I must higher always normally. be higher than your knee joint. Exactly. You need to sit higher, much better, exactly. Right. Perfect. And you want to slope down on your thigh, exactly like this. And your ankle should never be under your knee. It should always be a little forward. Yep. It should always be obtuse angles. So. If this is my spine, imagine that. It's a slope down on my, on my upper thigh and an obtuse angle to my lower thigh. Right. So not like this, not a right angle, you know. 
never like this, never right angle like that, always an obtuse angle like so. So straight, you know, vertical, sloping down, obtuse angle, sloping forward. Because playing the kick, kick drum is a downward motion, but it's also a forward motion, a kicking motion, you know? So that's important. Now, let's try and combine these techniques to play some dynamic bass drum patterns, okay? Mm -hmm. First exercise I have for you is a very simple triplet exercise. I want you to stomp with your right foot in a quarter note fashion. One, two, three, four. And the left foot fills in two triplets heel down. So this is a stomp, this is a heel down stroke, like this. One, two. Very good. That's great. Now, at the, uh, on the four of each bar, I want you to play three singles that are stomps, and then you land on the other foot and you repeat the pattern again. So the pattern goes right, 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 left, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Very good. And you can hear this is a dynamic foot pattern. Loud strokes, soft strokes, and a mixed sticking pattern. I'll play it a little faster, so. You get a cool, nice little dynamic bass drum pattern. And this is what you do in order to play dynamically, you combine exercises. For example, if I want to play a paradiddle, I'll play loud, soft, 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 loud, right, left, left. Exactly. So I use a heel um, up stroke and heel down strokes in combination. Just like using wrists and fingers with the hands. And if you take this and speed it up, Get a nice dynamic bass drum pattern. You know, with nice quarter note accents, or if you have a double paradiddle. <clears throat> I mean, that's why like guys like Buddy Rich uh, were such great drummers, because they were tap dancers in their youth, weren't they? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Palmer, Buddy Rich, Steve Gadd. Absolutely. Of course, it helps with ankle strength and foot development and coordination. Did you do any dancing like that? No, just very bad disco dancing. <laughs> But non, no, no, no tap dancing, ballroom dancing too. Right. Yeah. But anyways, this this is just to showcase how I combine techniques. This is what I do. Amazing. I switch from heel down to heel to up for crescendos. You know, for soft playing, it's heel down. You know, and sometimes I use heel, heel, uh, toe techniques. So I go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe for certain rolls. Or I use, you know, combinations of heel, toe, you know, uh, six stroke rolls or whatever. I don't do that so much anymore. I used to have pedals that were specifically designed for mm -hmm. heel, toe playing. Right. But now I focus everything on on regular pedals and just adjusting my technique, combining techniques to play dynamic patterns or to play nice tight chick sounds on the hi-hat or to work with the response of bizarre toys that I play with my pedals. All these combinations of techniques definitely help with all that. Awesome, so uh, just one question. You're on tour like a lot of days in, yes. the, in the year. You do sports, you have a family, a lot of other stuff to do. How often uh, do you get the chance to practice that? Or is it you just do it by playing? No, I do actually, you know, I have plenty of time to kill at airports, for example, or in long flights. They hate and you for that, don't they? They hate me for that, because I'm sitting there going. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, drive everybody nuts. No, but you can do this anywhere. Right. And this exercise, if you've played along with us, you notice it's high impact and you really train those muscles you need for playing. So often I do these exercises before a show backstage. I just sit, you know, and tap out little patterns with my feet. It warms up my legs and my hands. I do this clapping exercise or, you know, just finger snaps. 
you know, um, or you know the groping exercises I showed you. That's plenty of you know, of, of kind of warm up for me. I don't actually play much to warm up, and I unfortunately don't have much time to practice. But I try to work these kind of exercises into my daily uh, routines. Sometimes even in the gym, when I'm in the gym and I'm doing something, you know, between exercises, I would just tap out some patterns just to keep the juices flowing and keep it kind of working and moving. Um, you know, that kind of helps me compensate for the lack of time I have behind the kit practicing and warming up. 